Cam been going crazy this year. This nigga been about every big festival. His performance has been wild. And you can really hit a Cardi influence. I've been fucking with Cam since about early last year. And like, no dicking shit, bro. From the second I heard this EP, I knew this nigga was going to be different. He's been one of the biggest names in the underground for the past few years. And with him dropping his debut album, it's only right for me to make a video on him. Ken was born April 11, 2000, and he from Atlanta, and this nigga was bad as fuck, bro. When I say this nigga was bad, I mean like bad, bro. This nigga dropped out of regular school and went to military school, then got kicked out of military school. Like, who does that? Uh, you were supposed to stay there for like six months and me home like three months in. Did you learn any like skills or anything Yeah, there? for sure. You really just learn, like, just shut up. I ain't never heard no shit like that. Like, bro, what kind of kid you gotta be to drop out, then get kicked out of military school? What the fuck? That ain't my business. A lot of the early music he was listening to was from his mama. His mama really put him on some heat. This nigga mama was on some heat before the world even knew the shit was heat. She was playing old future tapes, Dirty Sprite, all that other shit. And she used to be on Wayne Heavy. So, you know what I'm saying? From a young age, this nigga was on some gas. This was like pretty early on. It's like this around the time he had first uh, went to military school, got kicked out. When he went to military school, he said himself that that's when he first realized he wanted to do music full time. I don't know what clicked in this nigga head. That nigga's probably in it, motherfucker, thinking about how much he hate this shit. But after he got kicked, out or around the time that he got kicked out he moved to the south side of atlanta and that's when this nigga met some important ass people this nigga met tm88 south side little 88 this nigga met all these 808 mafia niggas right he ended up joining for a little minute and if you don't know tm88 the nigga who met extra tour life and if you don't know south side what the fuck is you really doing south side done been in the game for so long and it made beats for about every big rapper you know of my nigga he even got a juice world tag even before this nigga Ken was on, he was in a stool with big artists. This nigga was in a stool with Uzi. He was in a stool with them niggas was making the super slimy tapes, all kind of shit. It really seemed like this nigga Ken was just made for this music shit. How you meet all these industry niggas like that? And don't start no industry plant comments, cause I don't, it don't seem like this industry plant shit. Then another big part of the reason why I think he is where he is today is cause this nigga work at. Y'all know how them producers be, right? Producers, they go in the stool, they be making beats from them. From when they wake up to they go to sleep, my nigga. They be in that motherfucker all day working and you heard what I just said. He was in the stool with two producers all the time. So it's only right for this nigga to adapt their work ethic. He learned from them. He, he, he took their positive traits, my nigga. From him being with them, that shit start causing the work 24 7. This nigga wake up, he in the stool recording. Go to sleep, he still recording. My nigga, nigga thinking about recording in his sleep. And I think this work ethic is the reason why he made some of the relationships he got. And I say this because think about it. This nigga in the studio all the time. Ain't no telling who we gonna meet. No, we met Playboy Cardi, nigga. This nigga's in the studio one day cardi came in there him being in the stool that day with cardi wasn't really the reason they became friends but it kind of caused them to become friends sometime after these niggas met in the studio ken was at a cardi show and i don't know what he had going on but he started scrapping with a nigga in the crowd them niggas got the hit they took ken crossing up out of there but as this nigga was leaving cardi recognized him he was like hell no i'm bringing him back in here so he brought ken back in there and i guess these niggas start chopping it up and this really like the moment that sparked their friendship or their whole association together and like look ever since that moment these these niggas been cool ever since. They bond was so strong, Cardi even signed him to his label in 2019. This nigga Cardi really got some underrated ass niggas on opium, bro. Nigga got long homicide game. So it's a lot of niggas on goddamn opium. But more about the music talk, Ken really been making music for a minute. But a lot of his old shit got deleted by his girlfriend. I guess them niggas got into an argument or some shit. Shit got mad, deleted all this shit. I don't know what the fuck this nigga was thinking, bro. I swear to God, a bitch delete my YouTube channel or some shit like that, I'm finna be so hot. I, I, I know that nigga was mad, bro. I'm telling you. Hell no, bro. I just can't imagine. I feel bad for any nigga who gotta go through some shit like that, bro. Even though that happened, that nigga still pushed through. And you gotta respect him for that. All this nigga music getting deleted, he said, fuck that. He kept dropping. This nigga done dropped hella mixtapes, hella songs, hella SoundCloud exclusives. This nigga been putting in that work, my nigga. From dropping his first known EP's Boy Barbie in the morning on Team X. And his number three album on Apple Music today. He been doing this shit. And ain't gave up. And for anybody wondering, Team X mean Teenage Ecstasy or Young High. Boy, because his junky ass nigga loves some fucking drugs. You listen to his music, you hearing about drugs the whole song. Speaking of Teen X, though, the song that really put eyes on this nigga was a song off his Teen X EP. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, you gotta be living under a rock if you never heard Yale, yeah, because this shit was definitely a trend on TikTok for a little minute. This Teen X series really what got him where he at today, though, because them got a lot of his big songs on there. And me personally, I think the second Teen X better than the first.
first one. Relapse is like a night and day difference between them two albums. He dropped the Relapse tape in about early January 2021. Then a few months later during the summer, he dropped his first album, Project X. I don't really consider it his debut album because at the time when he dropped it, he didn't really have a fan base. Like, I mean, he had a fan base, but he not as big as he is now. His Project X album did do good, though. That shit did real good, bro. I'm telling you, everybody in the underground was fucking with that album. I don't think I seen a single nigga get on the internet and say that album was ass. Everybody loved that shit. It might not have did so good commercially, but in the whole underground, niggas was loving that. It really started a whole wave of, 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 of beats. For months after this nigga album came out, I swear to God, it was so many niggas on Ken Carson type beats. Nigga, that shit was getting old, bro. I was getting mad like, bro, come on, bro. Y'all niggas gotta pick a different beat. But I can't blame niggas, though, because that album ain't had no misses. Them beats was going crazy. Not even just the beats. That nigga was really wilding on that tape, bro. But after he dropped Project X, he didn't really drop nothing on DSPs. If you don't know what a DSP is, basically Apple Music, Spotify, uh, Tidal, that kind of shit. He didn't drop nothing on them. He dropped a couple uh, SoundCloud exclusive tapes. One of the bitches was even 10 songs long, so pretty much an album. But it's like every time this nigga drop, niggas love it. And all that is really built up to what's going on today. Ken Carson released the album that I think will change his life. He released his highest charting album. That shit at number three on Apple right now, my nigga. What? Like, what kind of shit? Nigga looking like Yeet right now. This only the second day of it being out, and this shit peaked at number three. Maybe even two. I think it might have peaked at two. Then this nigga got all the major platforms pushing them. Academics, rap, our generation music, everything, everybody posting this nigga. And I think the craziest one that posted him is Academics. Because a few months ago, this nigga Academics was on Ken Carson's dick. This nigga was like, he's a Cardi clone. Nigga sound like Cardi and blah, blah, blah talking shit. Carson is signed to Playboy Cardi. I don't give a fuck who he signed. Your rapper signed whack artists all the fucking time. Ken Carson is a Cardi clone. That's what he sounded like to me. Chat, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with this dude, Ken Carson. All I'm just saying is that sometimes y'all be acting like I want to be up on niggas. I don't give a fuck. Now I ain't posting them. I know them two don't really got correlation. He probably just got paid to post them. And surprisingly, at comments was fucking with the album. And you niggas know how academics comments get. If academics post the album, them niggas will shit on the album. Call it ass. Call it mid. Who is this? Who that? Who you posting? Come on now. Y'all know how academics comments get. But them niggas was really liking his album. I seen hella W's. Niggas was like, this a classic. I was, I was surprised at comments was fucking with. I always love when people I listen to grow and become bigger artists. The moral of this video is to always work hard and never fall behind unlike the artist of my last video famous dicks who let the drugs take over his life and cause him to fall behind and ruin his life in the process